Good morning, friends on the East Coast of the United States. It's Trisha Roberts. My name and is my name, and uh, you're you're watching Faint Signals from Vega. So it's been a while since I've um, talked about veganism. Too long, really. I talk about it every day in some way on social media, but um, live streams are always a good way to uh, communicate while the al algorithms aren't too problematic. And um, and I wanted to share with you a, uh, a very short essay, if I may. And uh, I think that you'll find it uh, interesting and um, sort of something you probably haven't heard before. If anybody can hear me, if you would just leave a little message uh, letting me know that uh, the audio is okay. Um, I just noticed there's someone there. It's probably a bit early. Uh, Louise, can you hear uh, me okay? Just uh, put a little note saying you can hear me. Yeah, happy Friday the 13th to you. Can you hear me okay, Louise? Great. Okay, do I need to turn up a little bit or, or it's okay? Anyway, so uh, as I said, um, it's been a little while. I've been doing bite-sized MMT videos and um, and some other social justice issues, and uh, and um, also focusing on the geopolitical mess that's happening. Uh, you know, the bordering on World War Three. So that's uh, not a lot of fun. But anyway, um, veganism is a very very uh, important issue for me. It's an ethical position, and it's a growing um, grassroots movement worldwide. And so uh, it's something that I think it's important for us to consider. And therefore, um, I wanted to share with you, if I may, a, uh, a very a good essay, um, one of many, many great essays um, from this blog called There's an Elephant in the Room. And I will leave a link to There's an Elephant in the Room uh, for people to check out. And... Um, uh, I'd subscribe to it if I was you because the essays, um, Linda Clark is very prolific and the essays are really wonderful. She's very clear about this topic, which is very important because there's a lot of uh, misinformation and disinformation about veganism and there's a lot of uh, even people who call themselves vegan that promote happy animal slavery and things like that and happy animal products, you know, the so-called humane animal products. And I've done it a uh, live stream about that on Real Progressives uh, a few months ago um, about humane, the idea of humane, which is just a myth. So you might want to check that out, and I'll probably leave that uh, link to that in the information section. So if, um, if you could uh, uh, just keep an open mind when you're listening to this essay, and you may recognize some parts of it in yourself uh, that you've experienced, I certainly uh, do recognize some things, and um, and then uh, and then we'll consider uh, what the action is to take after, you know, after checking after uh, contemplating this. So the actual essay is called um, uh, "Memories of Leather and Fur." A single stark memory has plagued me all my life. A must. I must have been quite young, possibly in the 1960s, because I what I saw then would never ha have would never be seen nowadays. I had spotted a truck in traffic. It drew my attention, because protruding above its high sides was something odd that I just couldn't recognize. I stared, puzzled in the way you do when something just doesn't make sense, and as the truck move up moved off the penny finally dropped. I was looking at what seemed to be an enormous roll comprised of hides. The familiar black and white pattern of cow skins were pile, all piled together and rolled up, smeared with seeping fluids, caked with filth and darkening blood. The grisly imprint of the sight has stayed in my mind's eye all my life now reinterpreted with sorrow, deep regret, and merciless vegan clarity. It was many years later, but still long ago, that I learned about the fur trade, reading and watching videos that turned my stomach. The message of this, these 
was that using fur was disgusting, that it was so much worse than other kinds of animal cruelty, in quotes, that it was frivolous, self-indulgent, without any justification whatsoever. From that day on, I vowed that never again would I wear anything made of fur and disposed of every item that I owned that featured any fur at all. At every opportunity, I protested about fur, donating to those quote-unquote organizations that had first opened my eyes, who claimed to need my cash to bring an end to the trade, those members of other species whose interests they claim to represent. I signed petitions and wrote emails. I was an ardent opponent of, quote, cruelty to animals, end quote, or so I thought. In those days, I was vegetarian when I, it was convenient, and I had a thing about leather. I loved the smell of it, had leather boots, belts, and gloves, leather gear for my motorbike, and a couple of leather handbags that I prized. What was I thinking? Seriously, what was I thinking? I seem to remember that I vaguely thought leather was a byproduct of those quote-unquote food industries that I had been taught were essential for human health, but really, I can't understand why I didn't know more than I did. It was about six years ago that my true education began. I learned that human animals have no need to use members of other animal species for any purpose. That shook me. It was then that I really learned about leather. I learned about feathers. I learned about wool, about honey, and about the many euphemisms for dead flesh. I learned about dairy, about egg use, about testing and vivisection, circuses, zoos, and the whole gut-churning horror show. There was no denying the truth when it came along. I had discovered veganism. Slowly, incredulously, with bile rising in my throat, I realized that I had been lied to, manipulated and misled into thinking that some kinds of cruelty were worse than others. And I found myself asking, was fur, in quotes, any worse than tearing the feathers and down from the screaming and bloodied bodies of living birds? Worse than wrenching angora from rabbits sobbing in agony? Was fur any worse than leather, any worse than tearing the skin off a cow as her consciousness wanes with the lifeblood pulsing from her gashed throat and the places where her feet used to be? Was it any worse than the skin of my favorite gloves, the skin on my favorite gloves, that soft, smooth, silk, slil, uh, slink skin of the unborn calf, whose first and final gasps rasped from her new lungs, as he slithered wet with en her entrails from the womb of a disemboweled mother dying by pieces, while hanging from chains in our slaughterhouse, her, her only life draining away before she could birth her precious infant to the hell that was all she had known, a hell that her innocence could never understand. My new awareness demanded to know more about this fur that I had been so vociferous about, why it was any different from these new nightmares that still haunt the nights when sleep eludes me. Was there a difference? Was there? And my shattering heart told me, no, it was no different. There was no better, better in quotes, kind of atrocity, no quote unquote worse kind. It was all unnecessary. That was the day that I finally understood the meaning of betrayal, of self-disgust, and impotent rage against all the things that had been hidden from me, the lies I had been told and had foolishly believed. I had been trying to do the right thing while all the time being complicit 
as a consumer in an orgy of violence and oppression. I betrayed every value that I'd thought had defined me. I could never wish on another such an awakening from a lifetime of lies. And I became vegan because it was simply the least I could do. It was so unfair of any of us to consider that our peers can't handle the truth. We don't need imaginary checklists label quote unquote cruel and quote unquote kind. All any of us needs to know is that as human animals, we know we have no need to use the lives and bodies of members of other animal species for any purpose, just that one thing. Then knowing that one thing, if we are really sincere about not wanting to cause needless harm to those who are innocent and defenseless, we'll be desperate to stop doing it. It won't feel like doing without things. It won't feel like restriction or deprivation. For most vegans, um, I know, it's been difficult to stop quickly enough. So let's not just stop having victims of one species or several when becoming vegan means uh, we stop having victims of any species at all. Each new vegan is someone who will live the rest of their life doing their absolute best not to have victims. We owe our victims nothing less than the truth, and we owe our peers exactly the same. Be vegan. And Linda Clark, she leaves um, some information about the inconsistencies behind singling out fur, and uh, she leaves this excellent art article by um, author Sherry F. Cobb, who's a Justia columnist, professor of law um, and um, at Cornell Law School. And I'll leave a link to that um, very uh, great essay by Sherry F. Cobb. So, um, oh, was it not loud enough? Uh, Karen, you mentioned. Um, I've got it turned up fairly loud, but I'm not sure. Anyway, um, I hope that you heard that okay. And uh, so, you know, the um, the message in that basically is, you know, we tend to um, compartmentalize and um, a lot of us don't wear fur. So it's not very difficult to get on that bandwagon about fur and say fur is wrong. And often there's misogyny related to the whole fur campaign, anti-fur campaign thing, where um, people are throwing, you know, red paint at, at women wearing fur. Like, and as we can see, and as, as if you ever went to a slaughterhouse and um, cows are often not unconscious when they're at the hide ripping machine. So they're literally, a lot of cows, because of the fast paced lines, in slaughterhouses and all animal, most animals end up in these slaughterhouses, the ones on the so-called happy animal farms, they all wind up in the same horror houses, which is what a slaughterhouse is. And so cows end up on these fast paced uh, machines, um, fast paced processing lines, and um, they end up sort of uh, conscious while their skin is being ripped off them. You know, so, you know, leather is just equally as morally problematic as fur, as wool. And I'm going to leave some links to the various things uh, that are problematic about each, um, about different animal products. And you'll see that, you'll see that all animal use is abusive. All of it is abusive. All of it is, is cruel. And in the end, they all wind up in the same slaughterhouses. So um, for us to pick and choose as I was saying, you know, these fur campaigns, um, they target women and often it's misogynist when you wouldn't see them probably running around after bikers with leather coats and throwing red paint over, um, you know, um, bikers wearing leather coats, would you? You know, it, it's sort of a, a typical misogynist targeting of women, but really there's no difference between fur or wool or leather or flesh or dairy or eggs. It's all problematic, you know, circuses, um, the whole thing. It's all problematic because we're all seeing non-human sentient animals as resources, as things. And so when we fi finally wake up and we realize how problematic dairy is, 
Um, it's a real horror story, really, if you look into what is happens in the dairy industry. People think that, you know, there's these happy cows in fields and stuff. Well, that's what industry likes you to think. Um, you know, the, the the all these forms of animal use are horror stories. And in the end, but even if they were the happiest places on earth, right, where they're all, um, they have their own beds and they're, um, you know, sung to sleep at night. And, you know, even if it was some sort of ideal setting firstly they're they're um un, you know they're not it's not consensual they're there to be used but also they end up in the, their their children are still taken from them and they're usually killed when they're younger because even on these so-called happy farms if they're not productive they they end up being killed so you know the the the, the message i want you to take from this is to reject this sort of myth of um well, firstly, reject these single issue campaigns because until we recognize that animals are not things and not resources, it's not going to matter what is banned or boycotted. Um, these bans are, are going to come and go and that you see them regularly come and go. If there's a ban in some country, another country will take it up that particular um, animal exploitation and transport, you know, and export those products. You know, until we as a society, as a human society, recognize that these other animals, because we're animals, and these other, until we recognize these other animals are not our things, they're not lesser just because they're another species. Until we realize that here, you know, here and here, we're always going to find ways of excusing ourselves and sort of making excuses for our animal use. And we're always going to pick and choose, you know, because most of us don't wear fur. So it's easy for us to protest against something which doesn't really require us to change our behavior. However, all of us, most of us will wear leather. And I won't get into even the environmental costs of animal, ex animal agriculture. It's unbelievable and if you want to find out about that watch cowspiracy the sustainability secret that's a an excellent um, documentary if you want to find out about the health consequences which are tremendous um, i i advise you to to um, go to nutritionfacts.org um, by dr grieger it's not a vegan site it's a um a nutrition site. It's a science-backed nutrition site about a plant-based diet, and it also talks about um, the science-backed um, evidence about the problems with um, animal products. But I'm here today because veganism is an ethical position, just like any other valid ethical position. I focus on the ethics of why we should not use animals because that's what veganism is. That's what it originally was meant to be about. Um, Donald Watson coined the term in 1944 and, um, you know, that's what it was meant to be. It wasn't meant to be, let's find better, in quotes, ways of using animals. It wasn't meant to be, let's focus on one particular animal um, exploitation like fur or something like that and only reject that. Oh, it's, it wasn't about eating little bits of animal products or having meat-free Mondays and flexitarianism and um, all the other sorts of um, fads, you know, Veganuary and all these fads that are coming up today that are promoted by large bloated animal organizations. Veganism was always about rejecting animal use. It was always about recognizing the sentience of other animals and then a acting according to that. So um, that's why I don't really focus on the nutritional aspects, but um, sometimes I might mention them and and maybe I might even focus on some of it one time. But but the, the, the most important thing and something that is rarely discussed today, even by people who call themselves vegan, is uh, the, the, the bottom line, the thing that everything hinges on, and that is... Um, to reject uh, what we've been indoctrinated to believe right from when we were children, um, which is that, um, you know, that these other animals that share the planet and which are 99.99% um, of the planet's population, we've been told right from birth 
that these animals are here for us to use. And that's a very powerful indoctrination. It's very, very powerful and it's very difficult to break through. But sometimes, you know, people will catch on like that and sometimes it takes a message over and over and over again. And so you might think, oh, here she goes again talking about veganism. Um, uh, you know, but but that's the thing. Some people might take a while to um, to catch on to this and other people, they hear something and it clicks straight away and they think, wow, not only have I got to stop eating dairy, which is incredibly, incredibly violent industry, but I, you know, all industries are equally as violent and therefore, and these, these animals are sentient, doesn't matter what, who they are. So I've got to stop, you know, I've got to stop all, all of this animal products using and eating, wearing and using them. That's, you know, that's something that, that comes through to people. And that's what I, I'm trying to um, get across every time I talk about this issue. And I, sometimes I hit the mark and other times I'm not sure. Um, it really depends on, you know, how I'm feeling on the day, but I really, it's a very, very important issue to me. Um, there's other, there's other important issues, but this one, and this one is breaking through. Um, I just read the other day that there are 7% of the UK now, uh, would identify themselves as vegan. That's about three point something million people. It's really, since I became vegan 13 years ago now, um, the exponential growth has been astounding. It's literally taken off. <laughs> like I thought it might take quite a while to take off because it seemed to be going very slow when I first became vegan. And now it's just all over the place. I'm not saying that everybody has become vegan for ethical re reasons. And I consider that a bit problematic because unless you have the ethics inside you, if something becomes inconvenient, you're likely to say, oh, well, I'll just have a little bit of this or I'll do, it. you know, you you don't have this internalized position. But but it is taking off. And I think it's it's actually start the the ethic, ethical position is starting to via osmosis um, have traction. So that's really excellent. Um, so anyway, I hope that you have found something valuable uh, with this um with that particular essay I shared. Um, I thought uh, she's a wonderful writer, Linda Clark, and I'll, as I say, I'll leave a link to that blog. And um, I, I invite you to please look at um, the um, um, my my podcast, howtogovegan.org, which is, um, it's a comprehensive vegan uh, podcast and um, about the ethics of being vegan, but it also has nutrition information in it um, I've collect, collected um, some information that I think you'll find uh, very, very beneficial and certainly a motivator as well. And so it's at howtogovegan.org. I don't make any money from any of this. I just, um, I do it because I recognize and others, other vegans recognize that, um, you know, if we're truly for nonviolence, then one of the things that we can we can all do, we don't need to wait for any organizations to tell us to do it. We don't need to wait for KFC to stop um, selling animal products. We don't need to wait for Whole Foods to stop selling so-called humane label products. We don't need to um, make Whole Foods, um, you know, if we, if we all became vegan, our, the demand for animal products would stop. And that would be the end of these particular, they would find, they would start selling vegan products. You know how capitalism is? When there's enough of a niche, the market responds. So, you know, this whole idea of focusing on um, uh, different industries or, um, you know, sort of Whole Foods or any of these industries and trying to get them to do this and that is, is really a waste of time because, and it's also promoting the idea that we, it's, it's morally acceptable uh, to use animals as long as it's done humanely. And I reject that as a vegan. If it's just like if if I was um, a human rights advocate, I wouldn't suggest to people, okay, well, let's find uh, nicer ways of um, sort of abuse, you know, of child slavery. I wouldn't suggest that. I wouldn't say, um, okay, we'll only beat your child three days a week, and the other four days a week, um, don't. You know, I wouldn't suggest humane ways. 
um, as a human rights advocate of um, of treating humans. And that's, you know, and if we're truly, you know, as vegans, if one is, is a true vegan, then, you know, then we're not going to be suggesting, you know, better, in quotes, ways of doing the wrong thing. So um, that's what veganism is. It's not about finding better ways of doing the wrong thing. It's not about promoting um, every little bit helps or eating less meat and this sort of thing. It's a rejection of the use of sentient animals and it's not a sacrifice, it's a joy, truly. Um, it's, it's one of the best decisions that I've ever made in my life and um, I wish that I could um, I often say this, I wish I could do a mind meld uh, with people and just let them know how fantastic it is. And, you know, um, if we are talking about nonviolence, then we're, we are putting violence into our bodies three times a day and on our backs and any way we support animal exploitation. And we're also doing violence to the planet uh, you know, that we can quibble about the percentage, but 51% of greenhouse gases are from animal agriculture. And if you watch Cowspiracy, the sustainability secret, it's unbelievable the environmental damage that is happening due to animal agriculture. It is just something that has to end. It is not, it is not putting aside for a moment the ethics of using animals. Animal agriculture is completely unsustainable and all the these sort of odd suggestions of going into permaculture and growing growing um, fish in ditches and all that kind of thing it, and using animals as tractors and all of this. I mean, it's just nonsense. We cannot, you know, people live in cities and it's just totally, totally uh, unsustainable and illogical. You know, we just need to, there will be, there's, you know, this a third of the arable land in the world is used for animal agriculture. One acre every minute of Amazon rainforest is cleared uh, for animal agriculture and to, to grow soy to feed animals overseas. You know, I mean, one, one acre of Amazon rainforest every minute. And we are responsible if we are not vegan. It's not the industries that are responsible for that. They are just meeting demand. So let's stop looking out outside of ourselves and, and wringing our hands when we hear about forests being destroyed and uh, wildlife, you know, in quotes, wildlife being killed. Oftentimes, millions and millions and millions of animals in the wild, in quotes, are killed because of animal agriculture, because they consider them a threat and they're in, you know, they're interfering. Even around here where I live in Tasmania, they kill um, these little animals that are like, they're called paddy melons. They're beautiful little animals. We have them coming up um, every evening. Uh, we throw kangaroo pellets. They're like small kangaroos. And in Tasmania, they regularly kill, shoot paddy melons um, because uh, they eat the grass on the fields where the cows are. So, you know, that's part of it. And it's it's sort of like, you know, and there are, you know, large eagles being shot because people mistakenly think they're taking lambs and all this. They're, they're, they're in, in the United States, there is many, many animals, um, you know, in quotes, in the wild that it, who are killed uh, because they are seen as some sort of threat to, and they're killed in the most atrocious ways, poison, trapped, etc. So, you know, there's so much that is wrong with uh, eating, wearing, and using animals, you know, so much. Um, and and so, you know, it's something I, I, I used to grow up thinking that I never thought properly about this issue. Yeah, I'm not saying I'm in, I'm not, you know, often people go, oh, you think you're superior, you vegans. Actually, no. Um, somebody who's truly vegan will not be running around thinking they're fabulous. We've all, um, I've been a part of this indoctrination and, and I actually was a late bloomer, really. It, it, you know, I've, I'm, I've been around a lot longer than most people probably on Real Progressives. Um, I, I, it was, I was 45 years old when I discovered veganism and I became vegan overnight. I thought, wow, I, I heard about the dairy industry and I thought, wow, you know, this is just appalling. And I thought if that's 
how the dairy industry is. I'm sure all other industries are like that. And sure enough, you know, and, uh, and then you just, it clicks that you should, we just shouldn't be using these sentient animals. doesn't matter if they're on the happy little farms or whatever, you know, these so-called happy farms, you know, it's, it's, and it's something that, it, you know, I've been vegan now for 13 years, but it took me a long time to sort of, and it was just an accident that I found this article online about dairy. So I, I'm hoping that, um, you know, that you read into it further and, um, and I'll link, leave the link to that blog, as I said, and please check out howtogovegan.org. Um, and, uh, and, and think about, you know, the, there's, there are human rights activists being murdered in Latin American countries because they're trying to stop the Amazon rainforest from being destroyed. And so we're responsible for that too when we creep, when we, um, cause demand for animal products. So let's stop looking outwardly and wringing our hands about, this and that and about fur, isn't that awful, or about live export, uh, which is something that's going around, you know, you see it on, trend, excuse me, trending topics on social media, live export and how horrific that is. It, you know, it's all horrific. It's all horrific. Um, if you really want to see what it's really like, watch Earthlings, E-A-R-T-H-L-I-N-G-S, Earthlings, um, narrated by Joaquin Phoenix. Have a look at that and then get back to me how horrific it is. Unfortunately, Earthlings doesn't ask people to go vegan, but it's often some, the effects of watching Earthlings is usually people are so horrified that they go vegan. Um, so, you know, if you really want to know what animal, uh, animal use is like today, watch that. Um, there are other, other things I could suggest. Um, but, you know, if you don't want to be suffering PTSD after watching just the everyday workings of animal agriculture, just the usual, you know, this isn't, they're not aberrations. This is the everyday functionings of the animal facilities and whatever. If you don't want to be traumatized by that, then just read some um, information that I'll put in the information section and um, um, consider that. Okay, so I've talked long enough. Um, uh, so uh, anyway, thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope to do more vegan live streams um, in the in the future, more regular live streams. Um, I've been sort of busy with um, some LGBTI um, events in Tasmania. And uh, so it's been sort of a bit of a busy time during the summer, but it's actually coming into autumn now. Anyway, so thanks so much for watching. Uh, thank you, Beverly. And uh, if there's anybody has any questions, please feel free to uh, leave those questions and um, I'll try and answer them next time. Okay, so my name's Trish Roberts. You're watching Faint Signals from Vega. Till next time. Bye for now.